Hello people, walking back home and I thought I'd do a YouTube video. Consciousness, I want to do a little video about consciousness. <coughs> what is consciousness? Consciousness. The awareness within all things that makes us who we are. And how that is influenced by meditation and things. So usually a person's consciousness is centred on their senses. Sight, hearing, smell, touch, taste. <coughs> but a yogi or yogini learns to disconnect the senses. Uh, I'll give you an example. When I walk this road, I never used to walk this road at one time because I used to find it really stressful, all the noise. But as I keep forcing myself to do it, the no I switch off from the sound. So the noise, I, I can switch, I can switch off from the noise through, through forcing myself to do something, which takes practice. Yeah, you can run me over, but it'll be on YouTube. <laughs> We've got evidence. Um, so it's a mixture of there's a mixture of learning how to switch off the senses at will. That is what yoga is, that is what meditation is. <coughs> a person that has mastered it can master all the senses. They can switch off their hearing, they can switch off their eyesight, they can switch off their taste buds. Uh, but it's a lifelong practice. As I, as I say, I haven't mastered all of it. It's a lifelong practice. It's not something, it's not something that can be done in a day. I'll give you an example. According to my mum, when I was a little toddler, I used to scream and scream and scream when I used to get my hair cut with the clippers. Yet yeah, now, I can walk past a load of lorries, bla blaring their noise, and it doesn't really affect me. So this is an example of mastering the sense of hearing. So, and it gets a lot louder than this. It's quite. It's because it's late. So it's the road's quiet because it's late. It's around. It's about quarter to midnight. Because I don't, I don't go into late, so I don't get to bed so late. I was watching films on Lee Sky Stick on this one. I don't have Sky, I'm not posh. So, uh, so yeah, and I definitely don't have Sky movies. So, so yeah, so it's about trying to disconnect the, the so meditation is about disconnecting the senses. So, uh, we can disconnect the sense of sound and then we need to disconnect the other senses. Eventually we need to be able to do that. Another example might be if you're on a, a coach or a, or a train or something and there's a load of noise nearby or... I'll give you another example. I don't like going on coaches because you get people sitting right up close to you and you don't even know who these people are. So, I find that really awkward. That's why I catch trains. But since all these train strikes, and Ash has been asking me to go back to, back up to Middlesbrough, I says to him, I says, I don't think I can do it because my because I'm going to my sister's at Christmas. And my sister, if my sister finds out I've gone back up to here, she'll go mad. I mean, literally, she will have... You know that. 
Well, that's a good thing, because that's what brothers and sisters do with each other. Care for each other, look out for each other. That's nothing bad. But I'm just saying that my sister, and my mum probably, but definitely my sister. But, you know, it's, uh, yeah. I'm not really going to go into much detail, but I'm just going to say that, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm not going to go into any detail now. So, yeah, so... So this is trying to disconnect the sense of sound. Uh, I'm looking forward to going to my sister's at Christmas actually. I haven't done that for ages. I, done it with, I went with Lee up there about four or five years ago, I think. I don't know when. Lee said it was four years ago, I don't know. It was a while ago. Um, I don't know how it can be four years ago, because I was with Daniel four years ago, so... Unless it was three years ago, or two years ago, but I doubt it was four years ago. But, um, so yeah, so, I mean, I'm trying, I'm really struggling to disconnect the, the sound at the moment. It's like, it's like these lorries going past and I just try to, I try to block it out as much as I can, but it is very annoying. <coughs> what was I saying there? I lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, that was it. I'm looking forward to going to my sister's, yeah. We're going to do some cocktails and have, have fun, yeah. Be good. I've done it for ages. I haven't gone up to my sister's already. Oh, no, I haven't actually. No. It's about the transport works, that's why. Well, I think, um, I think in the new year I'm going to, uh, I'm going to take up my driving lessons again in the new year. There was a few factors where, there was a few reasons why I stopped doing my driving lesson. One was, I don't know if anyone's had driving lessons, but instructors can be quite bossy. And I was having visions of David Gibbs in my ear, shouting at me and telling me things, what to do and stuff. And I was, my head wasn't in the right place is what I'm trying to say. So, um, So now my head's a lot more sorted because <clears throat> I haven't seen him for about a year, almost a year. So now my head's a lot more sorted. I think about having driving lessons again next year. In the new year. Yeah, so. Yeah. This video is about consciousness, but I've gone off track on. Yeah, that's what that's what the yogi does, or even people who practice witchcraft they have to so have to switch off. <coughs> they have to switch off their senses. <coughs> witchcraft is a form of meditation. It's a form of evolution. It's a form. It's a form of empowerment. Basically, you're waking up parts of your mind which may have never been woken up before. Well, no, it wouldn't have been woken up before because you wouldn't have woken them up before. But that's what witchcraft is. The same as meditation. It's waking up parts of the mind. <coughs> oh, this is what I mean about this way. I can hardly hear myself think. So... It's about waking up parts of the mind which which lie dormant. Uh, and if the mind, if those parts of the mind can be woken up, then that can empower power, that can empower yourself. See, the mind has a lot of occult centres. It has a lot of hidden powers within the mind. And witchcraft and meditation and pranayama are all methods of unlocking those parts of the mind. So, yeah, that's what it's about. It's about unlocking those parts of the mind. I think you see people doing extraordinary things. 
And it's because they've unlocked, they've unlocked those parts of their mind. This is why religions like voodoo was created so that people could have power. So that <laughs> so the Africans it's practiced by anyone these days, but originally it was for Africans. It was because when they were put in slavery, the African religion decided many, many, many years ago a method of empowering those people. It says, hang on a minute, this shouldn't be right. Why should white people take all our power away from us? This is why the religion of voodoo was created. Voodoo is a form of witchcraft. It is a way of unlocking parts of the mind which remain dormant, which remain asleep. If you wake up those parts of the mind, there's no telling what you can do. Because it's never been verified scientifically. The scientists aren't interested in unlocking the mind. They're more interested in making more money, or they're more interested in travelling further into space, or, or creating new technology. But they're not interested in oh, yeah, but they're not interested. They're not interested in, in unlocking the very source of all those inventions. If you want real power, you have to go back to the source and find a way to unlock the source. If you want pure if you want pure power, you have to unlock the source and unlock and unlocking the source can only be can only be done through meditation, through prayer, through mantras, through incantations, through witchcraft, through ca lighting candles. Even just lighting a candle, you're awakening parts of your mind because, because fire, fire is a mystical symbol which gives life to everything. So even just lighting a candle, you're unlocking. Even just lighting a candle, you're unlocking a part, a part of your mind which was, which was closed off. So the people who truly have power in this world, on this home planet Earth, the people who truly have power are the ones that can unlock every part of their mind at 100%. Those people have 100% power. If they want a taxi to... If they want a taxi to pull up right next to them, a bit quicker than they can blink, and it'll happen, guaranteed, because the mind is the master of everything. There's nothing, there's nothing around, there's nothing anywhere I can see that is not a part of the mind. Even the trees, even the trees are part of the mind. Maybe not your mind, but the higher mind of God. Everything, everything come out of the mind. And when I say your mind, I mean the outer layer of the mind. God is in the centre of the mind. I'm not trying to say that there's two separate beings between a, a human and, a, and God. They're the same thing. It's just your consciousness is on the surface of, of your mind. God. God is in the inner mind. Remember, we're travelling from the outer universe, the human, to the inner universe, God. That's where we're trying to get to. With all these practices, all these rituals, that's where we're trying to get to. We're trying to go from outer space to inner space. Look at the God self of it all, everything. Everyone, all animals, 
all people, all trees, all bushes, everything. Everything is part of God. All of creation is in the consciousness of God. It's all there. It's all there waiting to be. It's all there waiting to be a, ma a masterpiece. It's all there waiting for someone to create a masterpiece out of it. Everything. It's all waiting for self-expression. Life cannot be contained. Life cannot be contained. It can't be stopped. Like the North Pole and the South Pole can't be stopped from melting. Neither can life be stopped. Everywhere life is recreating itself. Right now, at this very moment, viruses and bacteria are waking up in the North Pole and in the South Pole because the ice is melting. And again, that's life. There's life everywhere. It's constantly emerging. It's constantly being recreated somewhere by someone. Life is teeming. It's not something that can be stopped. And if we want to control, if we want to control it, we have to control our mind. The only way we can control the mind is a bit like a river. A river controls the flow of water. <clears throat> a disciplined mind controls the flow of life. So, in other words. In other words, if a very strong-minded person was to catch an illness, they would shake it off within no time at all. Whereas a weak-minded person would be struck down by the illness. This is why I say the mind is like a river. A channel for water to flow back to the ocean. It can't be stopped. But it can be controlled by the mind. And that is why we're here. To evolve. We're not here to just let the water pass through us. We're here to control it. And not in a nasty... Not in a nasty way, but in a positive, constructive way. So when I say control, I'm talking about control that is useful for everything. <clears throat> I'm not talking about wealth. I'm talking about, when I say control, I'm talking about... Um, sorry, I thought there might be ice on the floor though. When I'm talking about control, I'm talking about the constructive use of our body. So if there's rubbish on the floor, and people clean it up, and that's constructive. But but the problem with today is that people are really selfish, and they've created a world where animals are dying out in massive numbers. And they consider that because they're humans, that they can do that, but they can't. And the future will be about massive change to show people that they can't just keep damaging the environment for the sake of more money. <clears throat> it's not allowed. <sighs> anyway, I'm boring everyone to death, so I'm going to stop talking now. I'm nearly back anyway, by the Robin Hood. So... Yeah. Alright, then, peace, love and blessings, everyone. Peace, love and blessings. Peace, love and blessings.